Let's talk about it on the beat, presented by ChevyDriveChicago.com, with a guy who was in the war room when Mahomes was available for the Bears, our guy, front office member Josh Lucas. Okay, you were on a podcast recently, and you made an admission that I thought was really interesting. It's how quickly the front office of the Bears was convicted on Mitch Trubisky. What made you reflect on that? Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, how much we changed to the second time we got to choose a quarterback in the first round um, in 21 and take Justin. Back in 2017, you know, the GM, GM and myself were in line with who we thought the top quarterback in the draft was, obviously with, with Mitch. And, you know, all the way up until the combine, almost waiting for someone else in the building to strike passion for Deshaun Watson, to strike passion for Patrick Mahomes. And we never got anyone from, uh, you know, whether it was the coaching staff, whether it was uh, our scouts and personnel department, really fall in love with one of the other quarterbacks. So for us, and at the time, as, as part of the decision-making, um, you know, operation, I loved it. You know, I, I thought, you know, we, we have conviction on this guy. He's our guy. There's no, but there's not a lot of noise in the building um, that's going to look the other way, that's going to um, question our decision. Um, so, f- you know, looking back at it, really at the combine, I think we knew who we were going to take um, as long as he was available when, when our pick came up. Okay, so you have this experience. It doesn't work out the way that you guys wanted it to. How do you think that helped when you guys were ready to pick Justin Fields? Yeah, so that process, um, more collaborative, um, weighted. That decision on Justin Fields came down to the day of the draft. Um, uh, Head coach, uh, being an offensive head coach at the time with Coach Nagy, extremely involved in that decision. Um, So I think taking in the data points all the way up until the end of the draft, um, a more comprehensive uh, uh, process, I would say, allowed us, um, I, I thought, I was very proud on how, you know, I thought we improved on the process and we took who I think was the best quarterback available when we selected. Um, the situation ended up being very similar. We knew Trevor Lawrence was going one. We knew the Jets were taking Wilson. Trey Lance, for us, was not a first round quarterback. So he wasn't in the discussion. So Mac Jones, Justin Fields, v- very close opinions, grades. Uh, it, it was every other day, I, I think we might take Mac, I think we might take Justin. And it literally came down uh, ultimately to when you looked at the big picture, the grades were stronger throughout the building on Justin's side than they were for Mac. And I think that's ultimately, you know, how we came to the final decision to take Justin. Let me ask you about both guys as it pertains to trades. Like with Mitch, why did you guys feel comfortable making the trade to go to number two? And with Justin, when was the point when you guys are like, you know, we could make a move here and get the quarterback that we want. Yeah, so in 2017, um, obviously the only way you move from three to two is if you think someone's going to leap you and, and take the player you want it to. We had that information that there was a team behind us that was going to go move to the two spot. I've talked about this in the past on some other interviews I did. Um, whether that was true or not, we'll never know. That was the information we had. We didn't want to take the chance of not getting the quarterback that we felt was the best quarterback in the draft by getting leapfrogged, you know, and someone hopping up into that two spot. That's why we made that decision to move up one spot. Uh, 2021, much different story. Uh, People forget we actually were coming off of a playoff season. It wasn't an exciting playoff season, eight and eight lose to the New Orleans Saints in the first round of the playoffs. We knew we had to make a change at quarterback, but we were sitting, you know, in the back part of the draft. We weren't sitting in the top ten. So, you know, through ownership's permission, we knew how far we could go up, and we knew really, realistically, 
once Justin and Mac were sitting there past that in that seventh, eighth pick, we knew we had enough ammunition to start talking to teams to go up and to make the move. Okay, so here the Bears are again with an opportunity to kind of stay status quo or maybe change things up. Why don't we take a listen to what Ryan Poles had to say about what he's looking for in a quarterback? I got a lot of confidence in our ability to see talent on the field. Uh, the human being, we got to figure out. Um, this, especially to be a quarterback in, in this city. Anytime you have a passionate fan base, um, there's pressure to be the best and and to get over the hump and and, and carry that team to the to the next level. Um, I think this fan base is is dying for you know that guy to do that. And um, yeah, that's part of living in the big city. It's part of being a head coach in a big city, a gym in a big city. You got to have thick skin. You got to have it right. You got to have toughness to you. You got to have mental toughness. You got to be able to block things out. Um, so really, I, I got to find out about the human beings. I know that you're crushing tape. You're just looking at every single snap that you can find. Those things that Ryan Poles is talking about, what are the steps that front offices take to try and find those things out? Mm -hmm. Great question, and, and he's right on. They know who they want from who they think the best player on tape is. They know who that, that is right now. They need to fall in love with a person, with a quarterback that has the wiring to make it in this city. We talk about it all the time. Um, Justin Fields is wired the way you want him to be wired. Unfortunately, it, uh, the, the play on the field has been what has left um, his, you know, standing on the team with this much uncertainty. Ryan Poles, Ian Cunningham, Jeff King, the head coach, the new offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, they are going to exhaust every opportunity that they can find to dig information on all of these quarterback prospects that they're willing to take at one and then they will go beyond that you know there's firms you can hire there's private detectives you can hire that can go follow these kids find out more about their families find out about their spending habits find out about who's in their circle who do they listen to who influences them there is so many things you need to know beyond is he just a good teammate is he a good can he learn football what kind of person is he because no matter how talented he is he's gonna have a bad game more than likely he's gonna have two or three bad games and it is gonna get loud and it's gonna be heavy and he's gonna feel it and you better be able to handle it because it can even crush the most talented of quarterback so that's what they're doing right now. They need to figure out who's talented enough to get us to a Super Bowl, but who can play quarterback in this city when it's noisy and, and be able to handle that kind of adversity. And, and that's the job they have to do, you know, in the next uh, four or five months right now. We got like a minute left. You mentioned something to me a couple of weeks ago that I think is interesting. A new data point with these quarterbacks. It's the NIL money. How are teams handling dealing with, you brought up, the, how are you spending your money? How does that work? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, we're, we're talking, we're two, three years into this. Teams are still trying to fi probably figure out the best way, the best, it, this, this is probably some forensic accounting going on. Like, what are these kids doing with their money? Are they investing wisely? Are they out at the strip club all night? Are they just handing money out to people that are in their inner circle? You better know that. Because now you're about to hand, it, hand them even more money. And when we're talking about this position, you better have someone that is very responsible in all areas of his life because it can go sideways really fast if he's not. See, you learned something today, didn't you? You didn't even think about the NIL money, and now you have. You want to know why? Because our front office guy, Josh Lucas, let you in on everything. Sir, thank you as always. Appreciate having me. Congrats, you finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.